Thanks for joining me for Cardi B and Offset. Synastry reading, astrology, chart reading, love reading. So all of us have been privy to the fact that the two of them are once again on the outs, once again not getting along and not talking with each other. So today what we're going to do is go over their astrology natal chart and see what we can infer from that that can help us understand the dynamics in their relationship. Now, before I get into deep into their chart, I want to point out the way Offset is holding her hand in that picture. Ladies, I need you to get better at recognizing when a man doesn't like you. Some of you are so desperate to be approved of by a man that even when he doesn't treat you like the beautiful little princess and pretty flower that you are, you insist on sticking with him. Even though he's giving you all the signs. I've seen a couple of photos of Cardi B and Offset holding hands by now, doing the research for this live. And there's a theme here. <laughs> the way he holds her hand shows me clearly that he does not want to be holding her hand in public. If anybody holds your hand the way Offset holds Cardi's hand, you should know that person doesn't love you, okay? Thanks to you guys for joining the live. Go ahead and tap on the screen for me so we can get the likes up on the live and wake this thing up. And I'm going to get started by talking about some of their placements here, okay? So Cardi is a Libra sun. This is Tropical Astrology. Hi, Rochelle. <laughs> Thanks for being here. You guys go ahead and tap on the screen. Please tap on the screen and wake this thing up so we can get into this reading. All right. Good morning. Good morning. So I was going to make a video about this, but I thought let's have a 30 minute conversation so we can go all over the specifics. Okay. So Cardi is a Libra's son. She is. <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay, and then Offset is a Sagittarius Sun. Okay, she is in she is an Aries Moon. Okay, Aries Moon. Now this is important. Okay, Aries Moon is the most childish of all the Moon signs. Okay, childish, the least emotionally mature, the least emotionally intelligent the least capable of emotional self-reflection, period. Because Aries is an infant in astrology. You're asking an infant to self-reflect? Why would you do that? Why would you ask a baby that's three months old, six months old to think about what they're doing? Does that make sense to you? No. So the thing about Aries is at the moon, if they feel something, that's what they feel and that's all that there is period it doesn't matter if aries moon is 100 years old or if aries moon is actually five years old in real life they all are like this the beauty of this placement though is that these people are not manipulative these people are not two-faced these people are not conniving these people are not cunning what you see is what you get you like it or you don't like it that's fine you get to decide how you feel about it. But what's not going to happen is for them to <laughs> pretend to feel something they don't feel, pretend to like something they don't like, and do things to make you feel comfortable while they're uncomfortable. That's never happening. Okay? So that's the main thing that you need to know about Aries Moon. They are explosive. They are disruptive chaotic, emotionally unsettled, generally fairly angry, irritable, easily angered, okay? Easily triggered, easily angered. That's Aries moon. You know, all you have to do to get a baby to lose their mind is to take their pacifier. And that's it. That's enough. <laughs> Good morning, Ms. Jambier. If you take a baby's pacifier, they're losing it. That's it. That's all you have to do, <laughs> you know? But if you're trying to get 
let's say a 70 year old man or a 60 year old man to lose their mind, you're going to do more. You're going to have to do more than just take something away from them because they have different means to get you back. They know that can ruin you. So they're not going to get up in arms about it. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's the main issue with Aries Moon, okay? Now, before I get into the rest of their placements, I want to talk about these aspects. When we're doing a love compatibility reading, usually mine lasts 90 minutes. So I get plenty of time to dissect the information and look at the interactions across various placements, okay? When we're looking at the placement, we're looking to see what aspects are positive and what aspects are challenging. You can see on the right-hand side at the very top, looking at aspects, I put all of their aspects here so you guys can see it. And for those of you who are curious about this data, you can pull this data yourself if you're in a relationship with anybody at astroseek.com, okay? So looking at aspects, you can see they have the same aspects 13 times, okay? And then moving to the second highest aspect that they have here, well, conflict is actually quite low, even though conflict is what they're known for right now. Easy plus conflict is five. Conflict aspect is nine. Emotional pain is three. Um, passion aspect is three. Loving aspect is three. And exact aspect is 13. What that tells me is that these two are very similar. Karmically, spiritually, these two have very similar vibration very similar energy and when people are unhealed what they would do subconsciously they will attract people to their lives who are just like them and they do this so that <laughs> they can try to change themselves through that person okay now i know this sounds crazy but, but hang on with me so let's say let me take an example. Let's say I'm somebody who likes to cheat, as an example. I'm not in real life. In fact, I don't believe in cheating. I think cheating is for cowards. Um, but let's say I'm someone who likes to cheat. Like I'm someone who pretends to be loyal, pretends to be faithful. But really, I like, let's say I like getting you comfortable in the relationship. And I like getting you to a space where you think I can never cheat on you only so I can later cheat on you because my high comes from the fact that you believed the mess I was selling you and you fell for it and now I'm gonna cheat on you to humiliate you and embarrass you because the joke is on you for being ignorant enough to think that I would actually be faithful do you see that a lot of people are on this level of emotional immaturity and spiritual immaturity because they don't understand that everything we do here on this earth is under surveillance <laughs> they don't get it they don't understand that capricorn represents law and order because capricorn is a police and capricorn is literally the last zodiac sign that rules humanity because pisces is not ruling anymore pisces is just healing and Pisces is teaching people spiritually what's going on. So there's a reason God made the first zodiac sign the warrior and the last zodiac sign law and order. Because all of us are under spiritual surveillance. So everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we think, every energy that we put out, every energy we harness, every energy we grow, that energy is ours. And we can't give it to other people simply because somebody is reflecting it back at us. But demonic forces get people to believe that their energy is not theirs, that they can do whatever they want. And there's no consequence because there's no God. There's no accountability. And people fall for it. So a lot of unhealed low vibrational people, what they do is they will seek themselves in others and they know which parts of themselves need to heal. In the example that I gave, I know that I'm a chronic cheater. I know that I'm manipulative. I know that I like to get people comfortable in the relationship just so I can break their heart because I get high off of destroying your emotional well-being. That's where my powers come from. So these people will seek other people that need healing like them to give them this nasty present 
as a way to remind these people that they're not healed. A more loving approach, though, would be for them to actually heal and to not be that person. But a lot of people are not ready. <laughs> they're not ready for that stage of their life. So Cardi and Offset are karmics. This is what a karmic relationship looks like. It's two people that have been in each other's for many, many, many lifetimes and who do not want to learn lessons, which is why they keep going around in circle doing the same thing over and over again. And that's how we get here. Now, let's look to see um, what we have down here in their 12th house. So we have Cardi is Pisces in 12th house and Offset is Leo in 12th house. So he comes from a long line, long line of royalty of people that are confident, people that are perhaps even arrogant, and people that have a lot of knowledge about the world and that are well connected. And Cardi B comes from spiritual healers, witches, shamans, whatever you want to call them, people that work with the spirit world. So Cardi has this in her background. So when she said, be careful with me, that was a warning and she meant that and clearly what she did in this last trial exceeded what she did before because she spiritually put him back in his place which is underneath her feet he's now underneath her feet he's never going to be able to look at her in the eyes because she reminded him that she's more evolved than he is okay so when looking at the 12th house you want to see if there's any compatibility Leo is not compatible with Pisces. So these two are not a good match. They weren't a good match before. They're not a good match now. Another thing that I would look at to see if they're a good match is their seventh house. Seventh house, okay. So Venus in third for Cardi, which is like communication intellect. And he has Venus in seventh. Wow, that actually surprises me because that says that he actually likes relationships. This is an ideal placement for the seventh house because the seventh house is about marriage. So having Venus where you have your marriage is actually a very good thing. Okay, now let's move on to some of the other karmic placements. So Chiron, do you see Chiron topped, topped left inside? I want you to look at the top left inside chart. They both have the same Chiron. You see that? I want you to look at the top left inside chart. They both have the same Chiron. You see that? They both have Chiron and Leo. They both have Chiron in Leo. That means they both need to heal their ego. They both need to heal their pride. They both need to heal <laughs> their arrogance. They both need to get some humility about themselves. And they both need to work on being of service. You know, being less selfish. Using our power, not just for self-glorification, but really to help the world, which is why God brought everybody here. But some of us forgot <laughs> why we came. So I see Cardi be more vocal like with social issues and political issues. So she's certainly way ahead of this than Offset is, obviously, okay? So when you see that you and somebody have the same Chiron, it means you have the same healing work to do. And the bad thing about having somebody that has the same aspects as you is that the healing work that you haven't done, they will reflect it back at you. They will show you your wounds and depending on your level of maturity spiritual maturity energetic maturity emotional maturity you may interpret them reflecting your wounds back at you as them being crazy because you don't see yourself as the wounded one <laughs> and that's usually how projection works right it's like if i'm jealous of you instead of looking at myself and saying why am I envious of you? Why, why am I envious of your looks? Why am I envious of your intelligence? Why am I envious of the attention you get? Why am I envious of the way people love you? Why do I hate to see you being loved on? I'm not going to do that work. I don't want to do that work. You know what I'm going to do? 
I'm going to project. And projection is a psychological term where basically we take something that we don't like in ourselves and we give it to other people. And we say, you're doing too much. You're too cocky. You need to be humbled. You're not being a good person because I don't want to see that the issue is me. So it's easier for me to say the issue is you because then I don't have to change anything about me. And in the process, I get to make you feel bad about yourself. You see how that works? It's a win-win, okay? If I don't want to grow, I don't want to evolve, I don't want to be a better human being, it's a win-win. Another thing that's going on with these two that spells trouble, let's look at that Lilith. Lilith is our spiritual baddie energy. Cardi is Dominican from the Bronx, very family-oriented. So she is super traditional in the way that she was raised, even though she has made some choices that are different, you know, more progressive, like her being a stripper, for instance. Her having Lilith in Aquarius speaks to that. And you notice she has it at the 29th degree, which is a degree of fame in astrology. So I can see fame in her chart right away at her Lilith. The more Cardi embraces that she's different from her family of origin, the more success she has. And she's done that. She's in alignment because I know her mom didn't want her to be a stripper. She's talked about this numerous times. But Cardi is here to be the type of woman that plays the games that men play. And you can see in the way she checked offset by saying, and did, yes, I did have sex with someone else while I was pregnant. That was her way of saying, if you can do it, I can do it. Just because I'm born female does not mean that you get to demean me, you get to abuse me, and I'm just going to take it. If, if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. We can both play that game and see who's happy at the end. So Cardi's definitely activated her Lilith energy, and the fact that she's famous is an indication of that because she has it at the Leo. I suspect now that she is divorcing this man, her fame is actually about to escalate. And between me and you, I want Cardi B to be in some telenovela one day where she plays like some really famous, you know, Cuban actress. <laughs> Does anyone know who I'm talking about? Who had like tumultuous, tumultuous, I can't talk today, tumultuous, tumultuous, chewous. <laughs> okay, love affairs. And, you know, was kind of struggling with this idea of like the patriarchy and tradition and being somebody's wife and still staying true to yourself. I think Cardi's star is going to rise the more she distances herself from the patriarchy is my point. Because Cardi was born and raised in the patriarchy. She also has her North Node in Sagittarius. So she is destined for success. Success is her birthright. I can see it here. She is going to continue to be even more successful now that she let the dead weight go. Okay, so we've talked about the 12th house, about why they haven't been compatible through previous lives. Now, let's look at what God gave them in this life. Look at their Saturn placements. Topped, left and side, chucked. Do you see the Saturn placement? Saturn in what? Aquarius for her and Aquarius for him. In astrology, when you have the same aspect, it spells karma. The same aspect doesn't mean you're compatible. It means you have done this before and it didn't work out. If you meet somebody that has your Venus, run. If you meet somebody that has the same 12th house as you, run. Especially if you meet somebody that has the same Saturn as you because Saturn is karma. So having the same karma means that you have karmic ties, karmic bonds. And for those of you who are Capricorn, which is the number one karmic zodiac sign, which is why Capricorn is the last ruler on the, in the earthly realm, we have Aquarius, because Aquarius is co-ruled by Saturn, and Scorpio, because Scorpio is destructive. When God wants to destroy your life, God will send you a Scorpio, okay? When God wants to issue your karma, God will send you a Capricorn. When God wants to issue your karma with a little bit of flair, <laughs> God will send you an Aquarius because Aquarius likes to put a little twist on it just to make a little fun just for you. Okay. Those of us that are karmics, we know this. We know that when we meet people, there's something in them that needs to get broken. That's why we're meeting them. So it's only a matter of time before we take their mask off and expose them to themselves. And usually what happens when we do that is people who are low vibrational who don't want to see themselves blame us. They say we're the problem. 
when really all we did was show them to themselves. So when you have Saturn, the same Saturn placement with somebody, that should already tell you, me and this person have done this before, it didn't work out, let me leave that alone and get, let me go find somebody else that I'm more compatible with. Because the thing about love is that it's not about being the same. Because honestly, the issue with humanity is that there's too much narcissism on Earth. Everybody thinks the world is about them. Everybody thinks Earth is about them. And everybody thinks everything is about them. Very few people are thinking about other people and how the things that they do affects other people. And that's why the world is the way that it is. Because people think whatever they want, whatever they feel, whatever they need, that's all that matters because it's all about them. And some people get so lost in that world that they start actually thinking they're God. If you guys could go ahead and hit that screen for me, I would appreciate it. Some people think if they don't support you, you won't succeed because they think they're God. <laughs> some people think that if they create obstacle in your life, you're not going to get to where you're going because they're God. Some people, some people are so delusional. This is the problem on earth is that the humans who were their creation of the higher power, their creation, they start thinking they're the creator and they think that they're so important that they can go around and fuck with people's lives and it's fine because they're God. And what karma is, is a reminder that you aren't. You're a lot of things. You're a lot of beautiful, wonderful things, but you're not the last word. <laughs> God is. And that is the point of karma. So when you see that your karma is the same as somebody else, you've done it before. Now let's move on to Venus. Venus is the planet of love. Hers is in Scorpio. His is in Scorpio. So this is a karmic love, right? All these two can bring each other is destruction, Destruction for the sake of spiritual evolution. But low vibrational people do not want to evolve. They want to keep doing the same thing they were doing 10 years ago. They want to live the same life every day until they die. They want to wake up every day. They don't want to do any self-reflection. They don't want to leave any old ways behind. They don't want to try some new things. They don't want to take any accountability. They don't want none of that. What they want to do is blame, is project. That's what they want. Because these two activities require no effort, zero effort. All I have to do is sit back, cross my legs, judge, 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 judge. And I never have to bring that mirror to my face because why would I do that? That's painful. Healing is painful because healing requires that I look at my wounds. A lot of people don't want to look at their wounds because it hurts. They're cowards. cowards so the only way these two can make this work is if they're willing to break down the parts of themselves that are not conducive to love being good and healthy but they don't want to do that they don't want to do that two scorpios in a relationship together is the most toxic thing that anyone can experience because scorpio is the most toxic zodiac sign because Scorpio is the first one to get spiritual power, so they're the least experienced with it. So Scorpio gets a taste of what he feels like to have spiritual power, and they get drunk off of it. And they go ham. They're not the only one. They're just the first one to get it. Before Scorpio, nobody else has spiritual powers. When I tell you Scorpio can look at you and read your intentions like a book, I'm not exaggerating. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising, they know more about you than you realize about you. That's a gift God gave them. What Scorpio doesn't realize, though, is that as we age spiritually, as we go from Scorpio to Capricorn, um, I mean, Scorpio to Sagittarius, then to Capricorn, then to Aquarius and to Pisces, the spiritual powers only grow. So, so Scorpio doesn't have the most spiritual powers, but they think they do because they're the first one to get it. And their arrogance and their ego gets so stroked that they think they're God. Look at Diddy. So these two, having this in Venus, is the most toxic love relationship you can imagine. Okay? Now, moving on to the moon, which is where we started looking at this. Her mood is in Aries. I already explained the emotional immaturity of Aries. His is in Pisces. 
That means he has a great deal of emotional intelligence. He's much more emotionally intelligent than, than she could ever be, than she could ever dream of. So the antics that she pulls, like going on live and talking about, you know, all of this stuff and how she can never respect somebody that who's, who, whose finger she's been in. Like, what did she say about her finger? Something about her finger, something about if I've been inside of you. I, like, I don't know. I'm, I don't remember the lingo that she used. But the fact that you would even like publicly say that about your husband, like that's concerning. I'm on Cardi's side. Don't get it twisted. Because sometimes when people play in your face, you got to remind them. Because some people, they can't understand until you give them that same bitter pill they give you. So I'm on Cardi's side. But what I'm saying is her Aries moon made her not realize that that is inappropriate. I understand you're hurt, but you have kids, three of them. One day, they're going to hear about these things. They're going to read about these things. Do you really want your kids to know that you say these things about their father in a public platform? And the fact that you're not even thinking about that kind of long-term impact of your behavior is concerning. Even if Offset is in the wrong, that is not appropriate behavior for a mother you know, in front of her kids, like your kids don't want to know about your sex life. They don't. They're not interested in that. So you putting that out in the public where they can get access to that is, is very immature. And the fact that you're that old, and you think this is okay, for him, reinforces the fact that this is not going to work because he is, he's very emotionally in tune. And he knows that even though y'all are going through what y'all are going through, because this is not the first time you two have divorced and got got back together, you know, like this is not how we handle marital conflict. We don't handle marital conflict by inviting strangers into it. Kim Kardashian went through a traumatic divorce with Kanye. Did you see her getting on live and talking about these things with the public? intimate things about their sex life? No. Have you ever heard Kim Kardashian say disparaging things about Kanye West? Disgusting things about Kanye West? No. I'm not saying Kim is a standard for good behavior, but I'm saying clearly Kim has more emotional maturity than Cardi B. Because an emotionally mature person understands that their behavior is theirs, meaning they're choosing it. So they own it. And then secondly, they're able to project the impact of this behavior in the future. And if in the future that behavior is still good, then they know it's the right behavior. But an emotionally immature person is only focused on the here and now. And they don't own their behavior. They think what's happening right now is all that there is. They have no insight into the future, no, no care whatsoever about the outcome of their, their decisions. They don't want to own their decisions and they don't want to own the consequences of their decisions. That is emotional immaturity. And that is at the root of their issues. That's why this is not working out. The other thing is the ego, the sun sign. She is a Libra sun, Sagittarius sun. The problem with Libra and Sagittarius is that Sagittarius likes to rush Libra into a relationship and then they don't want to do the stuff that they promised Libra they were going to do. Are any of you Libra? Libra or Sagittarians? Have you ever dated the other? That's the pattern with these two because Sagittarius, you see the bow and arrow. The bow and arrow. That's Sagittarius. So when Sagittarius has a mind set on something, when, I, when, when a Sagittarius is aiming for something, that's all they're looking at. They're not interested in any other women. Like they want that woman and that's the one they want. When Sagittarius wants you, you're who they want. And that arrow is coming at you fast, quick fast, because they need it today. Let's lock this in. And what did he do? He impregnated that woman when she wasn't ready to get pregnant. And then talk that woman into having a marriage that, that wasn't the marriage she wanted. She said she got married in their bedroom. She didn't even have a wedding dress on. 
He just kept wearing her down and wearing her down like a typical fire sign. That's what fire signs do. If they want something, they go for it. Because what? Fire signs are masculine. She is a... She is... (laughs) Cardi B is Dominican. Well, partially. And from the island, right? She is deeply traditional, right? Grew up religious, And you think that woman wanted to have a wedding in her bedroom? You really think that was her dream wedding? As much as Cardi loves fashion and as excellent at fashion as she is, you don't think she wanted to wear a gorgeous gown and walk down the church aisle with all of her friends and family? That's what she wanted. But Offset had other plans and she gave in. And look at where we are. Now the vows that he took and the things he said he was going to do, he's not doing them. But who rushed her into marrying him? He did. Uh, Into marrying? He did. He did that. She only went along with it because she's traditional and she didn't want her children to be, you know, born and raised out of wedlock. Because traditional people like the structure of family. And that's what she thought that both loved. Family, structure, responsibility. But then when he got in the in the marriage, he decided he didn't want to act the part. Somebody said, I have an Aries sun stellium. Yes, we wear down. Yes, a fire sign will wear you down. They will keep burning and burning and burning until they've left you in ashes and you cannot fight them off. When they love you, it's like they they waterboard you with their love. I don't know how else to describe it, but that's really what it is. It's like a house on fire. Like, you got to get out now. It's intense. So the problem is that she let him lead the way. She's older than him by a year, which I didn't know. But because of the patriarchy, she let him lead the way. Whenever he would have decisions, things that he wanted to do, she went along with it. Because that's what a woman is supposed to do, right? When you're in a marriage, you're supposed to let your husband be the leader, right? That's what all of us were taught. So she let him be the leader. And time and time again, he disappointed her and reminded her that he was not a very good leader. That he's way more passive than she is. Now, let's talk about these Mars. The reason why she's acting this way as well is not just her Aries moon, which is the most immature moon sign you can have. It's also these Cancer Mars. Cancer Mars is passive aggressive. Cancer Mars is underhanded. Cancer Mars is petty. Cancer Mars is childish. Okay? Aries is the most childish. Cancer is the second most childish. Okay? Cancer Mars, I can handle a Cancer Mars. I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're a grown person. If you have a problem, I expect you to be a grown individual and communicate it. If you're going to act passive aggressive, I will purposely act like I don't receive the message. That's the type of person I am. I will purposely act like I don't know what you're talking about until you say it with your chest. Because why are we, why are we playing these silly games? Why, why are we playing these silly games? You're grown. On top of that, you're a mother of three kids. Now, if you need something, you ask for it. You have a conversation. But if you think you're going to manipulate me into the position that you want, I will purposely not respond to you so you can understand the limitations of your power because that is classic Sagittarius energy. And he's a Sagittarius Mars. When a Sagittarius Mars goes to war, they go to kill. You need to understand that. Sagittarius is the only zodiac sign who has a weapon. So when you put that at a Mars placement, what do you think you're going to get when it's time for war? Someone that is aggressive and purposeful. Because again, Sagittarius is the only zodiac sign with a weapon. So aiming is the specialty of Sagittarius. They don't do passive aggressive. They don't do in the corner. They don't do innuendos. They don't they don't do codes. 
they do to your face. And yes, I meant it. And yes, I wanted you to feel my wrath. And yes, I was intentional. And yes, I aimed. And yes, I wanted it to land exactly the way that it landed. And what about it? That's Sagittarius Mars. So you, you already are not compatible here because there's fire and water. Fire and water are not compatible. Okay? And Cancer is too immature for Sagittarius energetically. Sagittarius needs a lot of patience to work with Cancer so things can be good. But Offset, obviously, as you can see, doesn't have it, which is why Cardi is acting the way that she's acting because she's not getting his support. The other thing is Uranus relationships in order for them to last for a long time need to go through a process of death and rebirth constantly okay this is why scorpio is such a powerful zodiac sign because that is an energy that scorpio embodies so the person that you met when you first date started dating that person the offset that she met in 2017 is not the offset that she knows today but a lot of times Y'all don't want to grow with your person. Y'all don't want to evolve and develop in relationships. Some of you are more infatuated with love than you are with the concept of actually partnering with somebody for life. The concept of partnering with somebody requires effort. It requires work. It requires being uncomfortable. It requires being willing to challenge yourself, to look at yourself in the mirror, to examine parts of yourself that are no longer conducive to this vision that you have of a long-term you know, this vision that are, condu that are conducive, rather, to this vision of a long-term love relationship. So the things that your husband needs when you first meet him are not the same thing your husband might need from you five years later. The things that your wife needs when you first meet her are not the same thing she might need five years later. Some of you do not want to divorce love for the sake of relationship. You want the fantasy. You want the infatuation. But what you're actually there to work on is your character development. So you can become a better person. So you can give the best part of yourself to this person that you committed yourself to for life. A lot of y'all don't want to do that work. What you want is love. And you want that love with no responsibility. You want the blessings of that person's love. You want to take that person's love from them. And you don't want to give them love back. Because the love back that they need requires that you grow up that you evolve, that you mature. Both of them have their Uranus in Capricorn. Capricorn spells what? Karma. Now let's talk about making dreams come true. Neptune, right? That's how we make our dreams come true. They had a dream of growing old together. They both have that in Capricorn. Capricorn is the most emotionally mature zodiac sign. In any of these antics that you're seeing between her and Offset, do you see emotional maturity here? No. What we see is a lot of lies. Because emotionally immature people love lying. Because they don't like looking at themselves. They don't like themselves. They don't want to grow. They don't like themselves and they don't want to change. It's both. Because people who like themselves want the best for themselves. And people who want the best for themselves want to change because they want to grow. They know growth is the only way they are going to transcend their current reality. They know they have to constantly be in a process of growing, of stretching, of doing the uncomfortable things so they can be the very best version of themselves. People who don't like themselves don't want to engage in that work. But they still secretly want the rewards. They want the legacy. They want the stability. But they don't want the discipline that, that's required to achieve that. Capricorn is father time. Capricorn is about discipline, responsibility. It's about the grind. The life of Capricorn is about grinding it out. Nothing is given to Capricorn. From birth, none of them have good parents. None of them, even if their parents are in their lives. From, from birth, they have a hard time in life. From birth. And this is to teach them some harsh lessons about, hey, if you want to make something of your life, you got to take your life in your hands because nobody's coming to rescue you. That is the message of Capricorn. And many of them have horrible childhoods and their lives don't actually get good until after age 30. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising do not get married until after age 30. But it sounds like these two didn't really learn a lot of lessons. 
And maybe it's that they're too young. Maybe they needed to get older before they tried this. Moving on to Pluto, they have the same Pluto. Pluto is also a karmic placement, and it's in Scorpio. So again, all these two want to bring each other is destruction. But notice how they have it at the same exact degree. So the thing that God needs them to work on individually is the thing that they need to work on together. And obviously, if people are not willing to do their individual work on their own, what makes you think marrying them is going to make them do it? That's like having a baby to save your marriage. It's, it's a stupid concept because children bring more stress. They don't bring less stress to a relationship. They bring more. So if your relationship is on shaky grounds, what makes you think adding stress to the relationship is going to make it easier? And that's the issue with Pluto. Pluto will destroy you if you don't want to grow. Scorpio plays no games at all. Scorpio requires that you be willing to grow. And growth is painful because you've got to die to your old self so you can be reborn to your new self. The new love that God has written for, for the two of them required that they heal, that they both heal, that they both heal their sexuality, that they both heal their relationship with the patriarchy, with their fathers. That they're both heal their relationship with arrogance, with selfishness, with the theatrics, with the dramatic way they experience life, that they work towards having more stability. They don't want to do that. Cardi's North Node is in Sag. His North Node is in Capricorn. He is supposed to be the man that... He's supposed to be the man that she never had. And that's what he sold her. And he just failed to live up to that dream that he sold her. There's also a lot of issues here with fatherhood. What does it mean to be a good father? What does it mean to have a good father? Her first house, in addition to her having an Aries moon... She's also an Aries rising. So there's a lot of war energy to her, a lot of destructive energy to her in general. And that's what makes her very good in bed, which is probably what got him locked in. He's probably addicted to her physically with regards to the things that she can do in bed. But as far as the emotional connection, there's none. They don't speak the same language. There's no way an Aries and a Pisces could ever be in the same lane. That's like the grandfather, the grandmother of the Zodiac and the, and the newborn infant. They're, they're not the same. Pisces is the most spiritually aware Zodiac sign and Aries is the least spiritually aware Zodiac sign. They're not the same. Now, let's look at the planets in their respective houses. So Cardi's son is in Offset's second house. So she brought him money. Cardi's moon is in Offset's eighth house. His issues with her is her emotional immaturity. Cardi's Mercury is in Offset's second house. She definitely did help him communicate better. Cardi's Venus is in his third house. So their dreams of love that she spoke with her mouth, she also wasn't able to deliver that because what was required was for her to abandon this constant state of aggression that she's in and and lock in with the emotional vulner vulnerability that he needs to feel safe she's trying to out masculine him that's what's going on she wants to top him and he won't submit because she already picked him younger than her for this reason women that marry younger guys are women that want control because why would a woman want a, a younger man it makes no sense it's better for a woman to be with an older man for lots of good reasons. Women that pick younger guys are women that want to dominate and control the guy in the relationship, period. You can argue with me about that by yourself. I stand by what I said. There is no advantage. There are not many advantages to women marrying younger guys, except for sexuality. That's it. 
But if we're talking marriage, we're talking legacy, we're, we're talking building a family, a younger guy is going to have less resources, less access to, to resources, less life experience, less wisdom, less maturity, less emotional intelligence, less spirituality, less wisdom. Like, what are you going to do with that? Men do not mature as quickly as, 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 as girls. You know, boys and girls are not the same. Boys mature a lot slower than girls. This is, this is science. So why would a grown woman pick a man that is younger than her? It's not because she's expecting to get a mature man. She wants an immature man. But the thing is, Cardi didn't want to be mature. So she wanted him more immature than her, but she also didn't want to be mature. So we have two immature people trying to create a relationship. The other thing that doesn't work here is Mars. Mars is a planet of war. It's also the planet of sex. Cardi uses her sexuality to make money. She has that. <laughs> and he also uses his, you know, her sexuality to make money. You know, her Mars in his, is, is, is in his 10th house. So looking down here. So his 10th house is, in, is in, in Gemini. Her Mars is in his 10th house. So she is attacking his public. He should have known that she was going to publicly destroy him. Because the 10th house in astrology is about public image. It's about your public image. So when somebody has their Mars... In your 10th house, this is somebody who is going to try to bring down your public image. And she's doing that right now. She's bringing down his public image. And his Mars is in her 8th house. So he uses his Mars for her sex. But she uses hers to bring down his public image. These two are enemies. These two are enemies. These two are lifetime, like several lives enemies. These two have been at war with each other through several lifetimes. They can't stop fighting. They can't find the way to love. And he has a moon that is the most loving moon. But even then, I think he, his addictions has something to do with this problem that they're having. Moving on. Now I'm looking at the box on the right hand side. The one right on top of their pictures. That's the last thing I'm going to go over. And then we're going to close out this live. Her Jupiter is in his first house. That means that she brought him into her life so she could learn how to increase her fame, her luck, her success in life. Her Jupiter is in Sagittarius. No, let me go back. Her Jupiter is in Libra, but she has that in his first house. So she was studying him. She was studying him. She brought him close to her so she could study him, study the game through him, and use the information that she learned from him to make herself famous. And she's going to succeed because she paid attention. Her Saturn is in his fifth house. This is where the problem is. The cheating that he's doing, that's what the problem is. Because Saturn is about restriction. Saturn is about self-control. Saturn is in fifth house is the fifth house is about pleasures. It's about Leo energy. It's about being childlike. It's about having fun, no responsibility. When God puts the Saturn of your person in your fifth house, the only pleasure y'all are supposed to have is work. Y'all were supposed to work together to better yourselves and better your family and your, your bloodline. But they didn't want to do that. See, his problem is he likes to get around her and mingle with the people in her circle. He likes to sleep with girls that she knows, girls that she thought were her friends. That's what he likes to do. Because he wants to humiliate her. He hates her. He does not like her at all. And her Uranus, which is about her progress in life, how she gets ahead in life, is in his fourth house. So she definitely expended his family. I mean, she gave him a family. Her Neptune is in the fourth house. She is probably his dream girl. Her Pluto 
in it is in his third house it's the things that he says and doesn't say that kill the relationship like the cheating and the lying her north node is in his fourth house so she came to actually help she came to actually help him develop by giving him a family somebody said he's Chiron is in her fifth Her Lilith is in her sixth house, so he's bringing her health issues. He's bringing her health issues. She needs to let him go. Her Chiron is in his 12. Her Chiron is in Leo. They have the same Chiron. Yeah, she buries his son. She buries his son because Leo's ruled by the son. So she buries his fame. So let's summarize. Cardi just made Offset not famous anymore. Mark my words. His fame is gone. She won the war. He probably has won the war multiple times before, but she won this one. He's not bouncing back from this. These two are mortal enemies. I've never seen a chart that has so much karma in it like this one. Never. And I've seen lots of charts with karmics. I've never seen such a karmic chart is what I'm getting at. And then her rising is in his eighth house. So right off the bat, their personalities grade each other. This is not good. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, let's go over the last, let's go over which placements are karmics, and then I will close out with this. I need you ladies and gents to recognize when you're dating a karmic. A karmic is not your soulmate. A twin flame is not your soulmate. A karmic is not a soulmate. A karmic is somebody that you have beef with from previous lives that you need to resolve. And they've come back in this life to pay you back for the shit that you did to them in the previous life. Okay, a karmic is not your friend. A karmic is here to teach you some very bitter lessons about human beings and about life that you need to learn. That's not to say all karmics are bad because if you're willing to grow and learn, something good can come out of it. But many people are not. Take it from somebody that has worked in mental health since 2005 and primarily worked as a therapist. Change is hard and most people avoid it. Most people do not like change. They will come to therapy. They will spend money. They will spend time. They will tell you all the things. But when it comes time to actually do what they need to do to change, they don't want to do it or it's not easy to do. So they keep repeating what they've done. So a karmic coming into your life to teach you bitter lessons hardly ever, you know, gets <laughs> hardly ever gets received by you as them trying to help you. Most people interpret that karmic's behavior as discomfort. And as a result, they don't want to engage in a spiritual work that this karmic is helping them engage in. In this case, I think Cardi B learned the lesson with that Lilith in Aquarius. Lilith and Aquarius people are, are star seeds. Okay, if your Lilith is an Aquarius, you're a star seed. And that's why Cardi is so lovable, is because she feels like she belongs nowhere and everywhere at the same time. She has a huge heart. She's very sincere, very transparent, very loving. It's just she has a lot of emotional baggage that she has to unpack. And unfortunately for her, instead of focusing on that work, she found somebody else that has the same type of baggage. And then now they're both kind of stuck in this gridlock where nobody's growing and they just keep terrorizing each other by throwing that same shit that they don't like about each other back at each other's face. And that's why this relationship is not working. So let's summarize all the karmic placements that they have so I can count. That way, next time I have a reading that's karmic, I can see if I can find a couple that can top this level of toxicity. So starting with, okay, so starting with Mercury, right? Um, I'm sorry, this TikTok has that screen covered. Okay, so Mercury in Scorpio. So she's got Mercury in Scorpio. That's one karmic placement. She's got Venus in Scorpio. That's second one. She's got Uranus in Capricorn, third. She's got Lilith in Aquarius, fourth. She's got Neptune in Capricorn, fifth. She's got Pluto in Scorpio, six. 
So she's got six karmic placements. Cardi B is always the karma. Cardi B is always the karma, okay? Y'all mark my words. Cardi B is always the karma. Everybody who has gone out of their way to try to terrorize Cardi B and bring her, bring her down, especially with her having Libra sun, you know, Libra is exalted as Saturn, which is a planet of karma, and her fortune is in a Libra. Cardi B is going to get her karma at the end of this. When this is said and done, everything that is owed to her will be paid to her in full. Mark my words. And Offset is done. There is no fame he can have after this. The fame that he had is not sustainable. What's crazy is that God brought him here to be a family man. That's the crazy thing. Because his Capricorn North Node tells me he's here to be a family man. And the fact that she's being more family oriented than him tells you how crazy off his path he is. Because out of the two of them, she's supposed to be the one that's swallowing out, not him. Let's go over his karmic placements. So he has Scorpio Venus, Scorpio Pluto, Scorpio North Node, I mean Capricorn North Node, Lilith and Capricorn. You can see she's got more than him. And then let's not get into Virgo Rising. When I tell you ladies are Virgo men are not it this is what i mean he's a virgo rising these are people that like to look the part but not actually be the part virgo loves the charades of like perfection but most of them don't actually want to engage in the work the discipline you know they're doing it when you don't feel like it they're doing their grown and mature thing even though it requires biting your tongue most of them don't want to do that work what they want to do is throw their hands and hide and and hide and hide that's what they like to do many of them are, are cowards many of them are cowards that are caught up behind an image behind a mask where they're trying to get you to believe that there is something that they're not that's how i've experienced many of them they don't actually want to live up to purity they want to give the impression of being pure so he wants the fashion to look good he wants the wife he wants the kid but does he actually want to be a partner does he actually want to be a husband? Does he actually want to do the things that you need to do to be a good family man? No, he doesn't. But he does want the reward, though, of being the family man. He wants, he wants to get deals because he's a family man. He wants to make money because he's a family man. He wants to use that status to advertise himself to the world so, so people can think he's a good person. But then behind closed doors, he's abusing this woman. He's nagging at her. He's criticizing her. He's putting her down. That's all Virgo does when they're unevolved. That's all they can do because they hate themselves. They do. Because there's no way you can live under this level of critique and feel good about yourself. When the truth is, all of us are doing the best we can. All of us. Even those of us that are now where we want to be. We all are doing the best we can. And when you marry somebody, you don't marry them because... You want them to be perfect. You marry them because you want to grow with them. You want to work with them, to develop with them, and become better with them. But what a Virgo man wants to do is to look like he's a family man while he's cheating. So there you go. That's what went wrong. So in summary, Aries women, when I tell you guys that you're too masculine for these men, this is what I mean. She is an Aries moon and an Aries rising. She's the man in that relationship period. He could never be man enough for her. And I don't think Cardi will ever find a man that's man enough for her. I hope she learns from this and never gets married again because Lilith in Aquarius is not supposed to be a, a typical woman that does what the patriarchy asks of her. She's supposed to be the type of woman that does what she wants because Aquarius is a masculine zodiac sign in astrology. Okay, so that's all that I have about the Offset and Cardi B relationship synastry. I know I ran through some of this quite fast, but if you were to schedule your own astrology love reading, we will go over this in 90 minutes and we'll go over it in a lot more details. Um, for those of you who are new here, my name is Natalie Dadre. I worked in mental health from 2005 to 2000. I worked primarily as a therapist during those years. I have done a lot of couples therapy, individual therapy, group counseling. I am no longer involved in that work, although... I am still licensed to practice what I am more interested in at this stage of my life is spirituality. So I've made a shift 
to astrology and focusing specifically on how do we get our souls to evolve past this current state that we're at so we can basically mature, progress into the version of ourselves that God intended when we were created. And that's what I love about astrology. All right. So link in bio to follow my YouTube channels. At Intuitive Healing is where you'll find general astrology information. Styled Under is where you'll find love, relationship, compatibility. I talk a lot about celebrity culture there. And Astrology Weekly is all horoscope and manifestation. And I also live with a chronic illness called lupus. That's kind of what got me on this spiritual journey. And if you're interested in learning more about how to heal your body through nature um, and holistic healing, you can follow my YouTube channel called styled uh, under lupus styled under lupus all right guys take care of yourselves i love you bye bye